and to the plaintive strains of our usual theme tune, welcome to Lifestyles of the Very Hairy and Famous. Not really. Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you. It's just after 7.30, and it is a Thursday night, and the state president um, managed to, to change his arrangements so we could fit our slot in on a Thursday night, and he uh, occupied our time last night. So there we go. If you haven't been here before, my name is Alan. This is the IOL Pub Quiz. We have it twice a week, as best we can, 7.30s, Thursdays, and Mondays. The idea is to spend an hour or so together to have some fun. If you're there on your own, wherever you might be, well, then why don't you jot down and see what sort of answers you can get. If not, if you've got friends or family around you, split yourselves into team and see who is the brightest star in your environment for the night. And um, just to say to those of you who are joining us for the first time, and I hope there are some of you, um, at around about 8 o'clock, we have a quick break from the normal questions. We have a, a brief rapid fire just to get the adrenaline going again. And then we also do a little bit of a, a cheer and a shout and a like that for all those people in the essential services who continue to do fantastic work and keep us safe and sound. Hopefully, we're going to have time to uh, name the rooster in the corner over there. Um, who knows? I did post the uh, some of the options of the names there, so see how we do. Um, there are very, uh, very few other rules as far as uh, the game is concerned. Just to let you know, don't feel worried about the name pub quiz because it's where these type of quizzes originated. It's not about pubs and it's not about alcoholic beverages, although they come sometimes into the whole foodie element. Hello, everybody. Hi, Kathy Stanley. Hello, Cheryl Lindiwe Chlope Shannon. Hi, you all. Great to have you on board, and I hope that you're all keeping well, really do. So there we go. It's time to get started and see how well you do. Just for those of you who are joining for the first time and are in the uh, the chat column, try not to put the answers in. We only do that during rapid fire because then we can see who's the snappiest. For the rest, write them down after every 10 questions. I will read out the answers that my research team have uh, done their best to ensure are correct, and if they're not, let me know, and we will see what we can do. Lastly, Denise, hi. Great to have you all on board. So shall we fire away? Beautiful day today, wasn't it? Uh, we were having a, a great autumn. I, I know we shouldn't say it because we need the rain and so forth, but it really is nice to have these, these lovely days and also means it's a little bit brighter when you when you're open your eyes. So there we are. So question number one. Oh, yes, last thing. I'm going to try next week to, to present a different way so that I don't have to keep on doing that when I need to ask a question. We're going to do some tests and see if we can get that right. And then I don't look like somebody's coming in the door that I don't want to have around me. So there we are. Let's go. Question one. In what country is the movie Lost in Translation set? Bill Murray, Scarlett Johansson, brilliant award-winning movie, Lost in Translation. What is the country um, that Lost in Translation is set? So there we are. Up and running. Question number two, talking about countries and places. In what province of South Africa will you find Haris? The little town of Haris. Where is it in South Africa? In what province? Question number two. Question number two, I've just asked you. Question number three. You sometimes might go to a fast food joint and um, you'll be told you can have a choice of either bacon or macon. What do they make Macon out of? What do they make Bacon out of pork? But Macon, question number three. Question number four, and we're staying here in, in our country. Um, there's a massive, massive telescope uh, just outside Sutherland in the Cape. It is part of a network of the biggest telescope in the world. What's it called? The abbreviated term is fine. What is the name of the massive, I think it's the biggest telescope in the world, and that is outside Sutherland. Sticking outside Sutherland, um, things animal, um, you all have heard of merino sheep, uh, and you know them, they're around the farms of the Karoo and so forth, a lot of them, merinos and dorpers and so forth. So where do merino sheep originally come from? Where do they originate? Merino sheep. I didn't know it. I really didn't. I, I thought it was maybe Scotland or somewhere like that, but it's not. Right, going back to the movies, question number six. The amazingly talented Robert Downey Jr. 
Iron Man to a lot of you, but he has been around a lot longer than that. So Robert Downey Jr., what was the first film for which he was nominated an Academy Award? He didn't win it. I still think he should have. But Robert Downey Jr., what was the movie called? And he played the title character that he was nominated for an Academy Award or stroke of Oscar. An Oscar. Tell me. So write it down and we'll soon know the answer. Aha, this is a fun one. I wonder if you've already uh, observed this sometimes or if you, you've shown it to your kids. We're in the Southern Hemisphere. When you pull the plug out of the bath, which way does the water run down the plug? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? And it does go one way here and one way in the Northern Hemisphere. Believe me. There's even a scientific name for it. Clockwise or anti-clockwise in the Southern Hemisphere, water going down the plug. There we go. Question number eight. Here's an easy one for everybody just to get you, you know, if you thought one or two of them were a little bit different. Well, I hope they were different. They have to be different. We've had a couple of hundred questions now, and we've got to find some sort of diversion to, to go along a different line. But this is a, this is a great sort of warmer upper again. But um, question number eight. Whereabouts did Dorothy live in the story, The Wizard of Oz? Where was her home? Dorothy, The Wizard of Oz, you'll remember from the movie and from the songs and so forth, The Wizard of Oz, and it wasn't Hollywood. Another one that I found very interesting, and I also got it wrong the first time, so um, think about it for a second. It, it's not as obvious, and I, I try and say this sometimes, just a little bit of a help here. Where did ballet originate? Where did ballet, the ballet, where did it originate? No, oh, that's not where you think. So question number 10, first quarter has nearly gone. And back to the kitchen, back to the foodie stuff. Maybe even tonight you made a bechamel sauce, a bechamel sauce. What are the three primary ingredients for a good bechamel sauce? I'm not talking about salt and pepper either. I'm talking about the three primary ingredients. And there you have it. Ten questions like that. Oh, every now and again, I hope you'll join me in some form of liquid refreshment. My throat gets rather dry, and so I have source of Mother Nature's sauce here, um, H2O. But whatever you like, cheers to you. So there we have it. Um, ten questions. They go like that, don't they? So let's go back and I will remind you about the ones you maybe didn't get the first time. In what country is the movie Lost in Translation set? That of course is Japan, in Japan. But if you haven't seen the movie, watch it sometime if you can. And then staying with geography, in what province will you find the town of Haris? Haris? is in the Northern Cape. I've been to Harris, amazing little place. Then I asked you, what do you use? What is the source material to make Macon, not bacon, non-bacon, Macon, and the, and, the, and the name actually might have given it away to you. Annika, welcome, nice to have you on board. Um, if you could just not put the answers in the chat column for the moment, only for rapid fire, then you can do it. For the moment, you're going to, We'll write them down and we'll tell you how right you were for the first 10. If you want to carry on like that, it's all good and well. So, Macon, they make it. It's not a problem, Monica. It's not a problem. As I said before, we don't send around the quiz police to wrap you over the knuckles. <laughs> so, there we go. But it's great to have you and all of you here tonight. So, Macon, M for mutton. Mutton. So it's cured and smoked form of mutton, or I suppose lamb, um, but I think that is used as a bacon replacement, macon. So there we are. Then we stayed in this country and I said, what is the name of the, uh, the telescope just outside Sutherland? I said the abbreviated name for it would help, would be fine. Um, and it's called the movie with Angelina Jolie, Salt. Salt is the name, and I'll tell you why it's called Salt. It is the South African Large Telescope. <laughs> so there we are. I think Salt actually sounds a bit better than 
started bringing the large telescope. It's the largest optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere and one of the largest in the world. la di da di da 91 mirrors and all sorts of things. Um, just, it's very impressive. It's very, very impressive. And we were very fortunate to, to be awarded the contract to, to build SALT here. So there you go. Another one for your friends. You know, oh, we were looking through salt the other day. You know, the um, telescope outside Sutherland. There we go. Uh, question number five, uh, going back to Macon. Where do merino sheep originally come from? And I thought it was sort of the UK or Scotland. In fact, it's Spain, known as early as the 12th century, and may have actually been brought into Spain by the Moors, but it's recognised as being a Spanish sheep so there you are so next time you don't your uh, merino doesn't want to listen to you try speaking to it in spanish and see what happens question number six what movie garnered robert downey jr his first oscar nomination it was in the title role of charlie chaplin the movie was called chaplin and he was phenomenal the fun one for the kids um and did you all run through to the kitchen or the bathroom to see which way it was doing this which way does the water swirl down a plug hole in the Southern Hemisphere? It is caused by something called the Coriolis effect. So it's not just the Alan Milne effect, it's the Coriolis effect, a scientifically proven thing. That if you're in there because of the earth turning around on its axis and all that type of stuff, um, the water swirls a different way in the Southern Hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere. And here in the Southern Hemisphere, it goes down clockwise. That's what they said clockwise and then anti-clockwise in the north. Question number eight, where did Dorothy live in The Wizard of Oz? What did her aunt say to her in the middle of the story? Oh, Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. She lived on a farm in Kansas. That's where Dorothy lived with Toto and the rest, not the band, just Toto the dog. Question number nine, again, countries and places of origin and so forth. Um, are you still there? Everybody sort of kept very quiet all of a sudden. There's lots of hellos and now, boom, doesn't matter. I'm still here. So where was ballet first performed? This was an interesting one. I really found it amazing. Um, and the reason for it also, quite odd. The ballet, French word, yeah, meaning ballet. It was first originated in Italy. Yes. And... It was originated, I said no answers, but I didn't sort of say, well, I got it, or Alan, it's too hard, or gee, that one's so simple, you know, everybody knows it. There we go, you see, put in my basin, the chick. <laughs> you see, I knew somebody would do it, and I, I should have known it might be you. I've been told, I didn't run around pouring water down the uh, down the plug hole. I don't want to waste, we still carry buckets around and so forth, remember? We're still under... Uh, water restrictions, so not too much water down the drain, please, until you've proven one of us right. So, yes, it was started um, by people when they delivered the food at major banquets. They started to perform little vignettes representing what the food was or whatever. So a little twirl and a little swirl, a pirouette, a pie. So, and, and Nika says it's totally going anti-clockwise. Annika, where do you live? <laughs> if I'm wrong, um, the South Africa questions. Oh, Denise, I am sorry. We'll have to think of more Irish questions. But when we asked you about you two, you didn't get right anyway. So there. Yeah, so ballet, Italy, um, people bringing the food had to sort of do a little twirl and turn um, to, to entertain the guests while they brought the, uh, the food. And that's where ballet originated. Can you believe it? So, there we go. And question number 10, rounding off the first quarter and nearly the first quarter of an hour too, the three primary ingredients of bechamel sauce. Right? So many nice foodie things all have French names. Or whatever. Bechamel sauce, three main ingredients, butter, flour, and milk. As I said, don't worry about the, uh, about the salt and pepper and so forth. What I said is, I wish I didn't know who got it. Oh, I see. Okay, Denise, I do apologize. You see, I have to scan quickly, um, so I don't always get it right. Just like Annika says, 
I haven't got the clockwise thing. Well, I'm going to have to speak to the, the Coriolis people who, um, you know, who, who said that's how it worked. Gary, Denise, five, not too bad, through Ruth, three, Denise, four, and Denise said the siphon questions were bothering her. So there we go. Um, Jesse, four, as I always say, four, 40%. Get you into university, Shannon. Kathy Stanley, six. You're just bragging now, Kathy. Really are just bragging. Annika, it's going to check again. Annika, why don't you stay with us and then when we wrap, you can check and then you can always let me know on Monday. Did I Google Jeffrey Archer? Yes. For a start, Jeffrey Archer doesn't have a beard. Um, he doesn't have this much hair. He doesn't wear, he only wears glasses occasionally. No, I didn't. I, I, I didn't see it. Michelle, so you got five. So there. Cheryl, two. It's okay. We've got another 30 to go. Cheryl, you could overtake everybody and be the brain of the day. So don't let it bother you. We will continue now. This is an interesting one. Don't know. The movie buffs may know this. Otherwise, I didn't. I'll, I'll tell you I didn't. Right. What was the first 3D color movie ever shown in the world? Yeah. And I thought it was like 1980 or whatever. It was much longer before that. I think. Like a young Jeffrey. I didn't see pictures of the young Jeffrey, so I'll have to look up young Jeffrey this time, Denise, and, and I will tell you what I think. Question number 12. Ah, entertainment from the 50s, 60s, 70s. At one time was the highest paid entertainer in the world, especially with his Vegas and TV shows. Which famous 20th century entertainer, pianist, always had a candelabra on the piano? Always had a candelabra on the piano. There was a movie made about him a while ago with Michael Douglas um, in the lead role. Yeah. So there. Which famous pianist was the greatest entertainer in the world for many years? The highest paid. Always had a candelabra on the piano when he played it. So there we go. Question number 13. If you know what an invertebrate is, then you'll know the answer to this one. Invertebrates are any form of living being that does not have a spinal column. So there. Some people, you might say, don't have a spine. I know that. But they're not. Um... Denise missed question number one. Give yourself half a point for, for trying. <laughs> so. Invertebrates, which is the most intelligent invertebrate? And I've seen this in action. So there we go. I'm sure Annika's going to tell us I'm wrong, but 